These difficulties occur on the lower levels of sensation. Now, you remember some of these arguments, the, the, uh, the white cardboard with some black on it that looks purple and green and blue and red and so on, and all the, uh, if, if you get, if you get a, a good-sized psychology book on perception, you ought to find uh, many, many such illustrations in its first chapter, and so on. They're, 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 they're. Well, these difficulties occur on the lower levels of sensation. Further difficulties occur as we rise higher. The question is, how can we confidently develop sensations into perceptions? Nearly all Christian apologists of the empirical variety totally ignore this essential link in their chain of reasoning. And I say that on the basis of conversing with a number of such. They evade the question. They won't answer it. But to make their theory complete, they must answer it. How do you, how do you get from sensations to perceptions? A secular answer, not given by any uh, Christian apology that I know of, a secular answer is that perception is an inference from sensation. Yet a very competent philosopher, secular philosopher, who went into great detail to show how these inferences were made, never was able to distinguish a valid inference from an invalid one. Until someone does so, empirical apologetics is unacceptable. And so I present this challenge to all empirical apologies. Show me how you validly can infer a perception from a sensation or a group of sensations. And I have asked this question over and over again, and they won't answer. The next step an empiricist must take is the development of abstract ideas. Now, from you see, we have sensation, perception, and then abstraction. In the springtime, the Arizona desert blossoms, not like the rose, but even more spectacularly. Educated people, however, are not satisfied with the visible beauty. They also want to know why a saguaro is a cactus and why an acatilla is not. People wish to distinguish between bull terriers and English setters. What is a star and what is a planet? Eventually, they want to understand the meaning of justice, theft, pride, and the square root of minus one. These are all abstract ideas. So far as I know, the only empirical attempt to explain abstract ideas has been to pass from perception through memory images to the abstraction. And that is the way Aristotle did it, and the way John Locke did it, and the way Berkeley did it. Did you see that yes. Eventually, people want to understand the meaning of justice, theft, pride, and the square root of minus one. These are all abstract ideas, at least on the empirical position. So far as I know, the only empirical attempt to explain abstract ideas has been to pass from perception through memory images to the abstraction. Since the sensations and perceptions are momentary, they must produce images of longer duration from which the idea is abstracted. Both Hume and Bertrand Russell assert, emphatically assert, that all men have such images. Now, let me ask you a few questions. How many of you dream in technicolor? Well, half a dozen of you, but I judge that the rest of you do not dream in technicolor. 
How many of you dream in black and white? Then I expect to see a number of hands who don't dream. Is that right? We don't know. We don't yeah, know. They don't have enough to <laughs> Let me ask you this question. Can you shut your eyes and see, in a metaphorical sense, see the face of someone you know quite well? How many cannot do that? And yet you dream in technicolor, but you can't do that. Well, all right, all right. Simply shows how queer some people are. <laughs> I'll, I'll adumbrate that explanation in a minute because I, I know something queerer. Uh, how, uh, when, when, you, when you recognize some people when you're walking through the hall, do you, do you look at an image and then look at the person and say, oh yes, I know him because he's the image. Is, is that the way you recognize people? Well, then what good are images? Well, I'll go on anyhow. Uh, some of you apparently cannot see the face of someone you know very well. Let me give you just one or other two little tests. Uh, uh, how many of you cannot see, that is, have a memory image of uh, your kitchen or your bedroom or something or other? How many cannot? You cannot. All right, all right. But the rest of you can, apparently. Even if you don't dream, and uh, even if you can't see uh, a face, you can see uh, a room. All right. Now let me ask you this question. How many of you cannot hear, that is, imagine, a tune? How many of you cannot hear my country tis of thee, or something like that. Any Anybody cannot? No, everybody can sort of hear tunes? Well, all right. If you say so, nobody can disagree with you. Let me ask this question. How many of you here in this room can smell bacon and eggs frying? How many cannot smell bacon and eggs frying? Well, there's three or four, five, six, yeah, maybe some more, eight or nine. Uh, how, many, uh, how many of you cannot feel something between your fingers as if maybe you were feeling leather or silk or paper or something? How many of you cannot feel that sensation or image of that sensation in your fingers? How many cannot? Uh, only, only about three. Yeah. Well, that's uh, well. At any rate, this should show to you that uh, not everybody has five different types of images. Did I give all five? No, I guess I omitted olfactory images. How many of you cannot smell gasoline here in this room? Well, there are several. Yeah. So you see, not everybody has all five types of image, all five types of imagination. And uh, maybe there's somebody in the room that doesn't have any of these five types. And I noticed that one or two people put up their hands uh, more than once, so they are deficient in two or three different respects. And uh, maybe, though this wasn't, this wasn't done in a very scientific manner, not careful enough, but it is quite possible, isn't it, there is someone here in the room who doesn't have any of the five types of imagery. Well, now, since empiricism depends on imagery to produce abstract ideas, how are you going to explain explain the extensive scholarship of people who have no imagery at all. Yeah. Maybe the knowledge is besides subconscious rather than 
conscious. Maybe it can't be consciously. Uh, how, can, how can an image be subconscious? Let's go to Plato's cave. What about Plato's cave? Well, you'll get there. No, that's perception. It's a shadow of light. And We're not talking about sense perception. We're talking about memory no, I'm images. Talking about, I'm talking about... Okay, I, I was talking about uh, making sense and having it... Um, having the empirical theory is that you begin no, with sensation. Right. Yeah, right. okay. The empirical theory be begins with sensation, goes on to perception, then through <laughs> imagery to abstract ideas. And yet, numbers of very highly educated people have no imagery whatever. There was, a, there was a questionnaire that was sent out by a psychologist by the name of Galton, and this was sent out to scientists, to uh, politicians in high offices, not the lower ones, uh, and to various very well-educated people. And uh, quite a number of them, not just a few, but quite a number of them uh, not only said they didn't have such images, they were astounded to s hear that other people did. They thought the notion of imagery was just a, a literary metaphor and had no literal meaning, and that people really didn't have, and they, di they didn't realize that people do have such images. Now, if you're queer, I'm queer because I have no images at all. Yeah. Well, then you do have visual and auditory images. No, I don't. No, I do not. I well, if you have color, isn't that uh, okay, visual? Okay, okay, I do, but I'm saying that right now I cannot picture... Yeah, you can do it when you're asleep, but not when you're awake. Yeah, right. Now, all right, all right. Hmm? So maybe it's a function of the subconscious. There's no such thing as subconscious. Things are either conscious or unconscious. How can they be <laughs> no, but the, Don't you think that it's possible to have knowledge that one cannot recall at a specific moment? Well, then you're unconscious of it. Right, but then there is what, what, what category? Right. But what, what category then would you put that knowledge in? Unconscious. Okay, but then there is something that is, that is knowledge that exists outside of the conscious. Yeah, I guess so. And it seems to me what you're trying to evoke here was a conscious response to that. No, what I am interested here is to show an impossible difficulty in the empirical theory. They assert that abstract ideas can only be obtained through memory images. And I have given examples, and you can check with uh, the history of psychology if you wish, uh, Galton's experiment. And uh, here are people who are highly educated who have no images at all.